Uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, looking at verses 16 and 17. James 1, 16 and 17. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now recently I came upon a little article on the website of the Christian organization, The Navigators. It was about gratitude. But it didn't focus on just you know, encouraging us to be thankful and, and reminding us of all the things we have to be grateful for and counting our blessings as we just sang about a few moments ago. But it came at it from a little different angle. It focused on the things in our lives, you know, attitudes, mindsets, and other things that can hinder us from being the thankful people that we ought to be. It's kind of like you know, when we talk about good health and how to have good health. Now, on the one hand, we can and we should focus on the positive things that we ought to add to our lives, things that we uh, should do or things that we could do better than what we are. You know, for example, like maybe I need to eat more fruits or vegetables or other foods that are good for me. Or maybe I need to try to instill some better habits in my life, you know, like trying to get some more exercise or making sure I get in my... 10 to 12,000 Fitbit steps every day or other things along those lines. It's good to add those things, but just adding those things into my life may not be enough to make a big difference and make me more healthy. I also may need to look at some things in my life that are hindering me uh, from being healthy and maybe seeking to get rid of some of those. Now, I can start eating more fruits and vegetables. But maybe there are also some things I've been eating that I need to cut back on a little bit or maybe even a few that I might have to do away with altogether or ought to anyway. Too many trips to the Dairy Queen? Too many trips? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, can there be too many trips to Dairy Queen? <laughs> there can be. I'll admit that. Uh, or maybe, you know, there are some... Uh, <coughs> habits in my life that although I may start that good habit of walking every day maybe there are some other habits in my life I may need to address that that are contributing to my not having very good health uh, the point is it's not just about doing things or adding things sometimes it may be about removing some hindrances that are there as well and the same can tr hold true for us concerning having a grateful heart while there are things we can do to try to be more grateful and we can try to count our blessings more and those type things, there are also some things that we may need to get rid of or that we may need to deal with in some way, some things that are getting in the way of us being as grateful as we should be. And so that's what we're going to focus on for a few minutes, some of those hindrances to our having grateful hearts. And I'm going to share the ones that are mentioned in that article that I mentioned and kind of expand on those a little bit and add one or two more to it that came to mind as I thought about these things. And there may be others. But as we do this, let's just ask the Lord to show us anything in our lives, any attitudes or spirit or mindset that's hindering us from possessing that degree of gratitude that we ought to have. Well, one hindrance to having a grateful heart is pride. Pride. In that article it said, sometimes we're not grateful because we think we deserve something. We feel that we earned it or that it's ours by right. And it gives the example of not thanking your employer for your paycheck because that's something that you've earned. Uh, I mean, you might be thankful for your job because you know that, that there's a lot of people out there just as qualified as you are who maybe don't have jobs. But that paycheck, you know, that particular paycheck is something that you earned. You did the work and that employer owes it to you now. Not only do you probably not thank the employer for, for it, but if it isn't all you think it should be, you might complain about it. And, you know, if you don't think it's the right amount, if you think they're shortchanging you, not paying you enough, uh, everything that you deserve, you might point it out and try to get that rectified. And that's understandable. That's money you worked for. You earn that. They owe it to you. 
So, uh, so while you might be grateful that, that you have a paycheck coming in, you might not feel as much a sense of gratitude for that one check because you feel that, that you're owed that. You earned it. You did something to earn it. And a similar spirit that I was thinking about we see so much of today is that spirit of entitlement. In so many areas of, our, of life, people aren't grateful because they feel like they're entitled to those things that they receive. <laughs> They believe that, that they have a right to what others have, even though others may have worked and sacrificed and saved in order to, to be able to, to afford those things. But we know, you know some people get things and they aren't grateful because they look at it as something they deserve, something that uh, uh, society or the government or, or somebody else owes them. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, that kind of a spirit can invade even how we look at God and at His blessings. We can begin to look at God's gracious gifts to us as, as things that we deserve because, maybe just because we're human beings, or because we're good people, or because maybe because I'm a child of God and I'm a follower of Jesus, so He kind of owes me that, or I'm entitled to it. I mean, we do need to know who we are in Christ. And, and we need to know that we as human beings are made in the image of God and that's significant. Uh, we need to know that we're special in God's sight and that He loves us. We need to know all that it does mean to be born again and, and, and a Spirit-filled follower of Jesus. Uh, we need to recognize the rights and the privileges and the power that we have through Christ because of that. But let's be careful that we don't take that to the degree that we start feeling like God owes us something, or that in some way we deserve His blessings in our lives. Everything that we receive is by God's grace. It's nothing that we have earned or deserved. Because of our sin, we all deserve condemnation and hell. Uh, as that verse in Lamentations that you may remember we read last Sunday's noted, that it's only through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's only through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Now, God can send down fire from heaven and wipe us all out, and He'd be justified in doing that. That's what we deserve. But out of grace and mercy, He doesn't do that. And He gives us blessings on top of that, including the opportunity to be adopted into His family, to have eternal life through faith in Christ and what He did for us on the cross. And then as His followers, He blesses us with so much more. Now in the Bible it refers to it, at least in one place, maybe more than one place, as the riches of His grace. The riches. You know, the spiritual riches and all the other blessings of life. Uh, they're, they're not riches that we've earned and that we deserve, but they're totally by God's grace. His gift to us that we don't deserve. We're not entitled to it, but He gives it to us anyway. The verse that we read here in James, it refers to God's blessings as gifts. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from our Heavenly Father. Notice they're gifts. It's not wages. It's not things that we've earned or deserved, but it's gifts. So let's remember that. Let's watch out for any pride or any sense of entitlement in our hearts and in our minds because that kind of spirit can definitely hinder us from having the kind of grateful hearts that we ought to have. Another hindrance can be resentment. Resentment. The article said there are times when we're not thankful because we don't have exactly what we want or think we want, someone else has more than we do, or their life seems to be better. So you see the problem there, kind of where that problem comes from? We can start feeling that kind of resentment when we do what? When we start comparing ourselves with others and measuring what we have or what we don't have up against what they have. Uh, we don't feel very thankful for our car because we know so-and-so over there has a much bigger or newer or, or fancier kind of car than what we've got. Or we aren't very thankful for our house and the roof we have over our head because we see that other person in a much bigger house. Or we're not thankful for, for our lives and our families. 
Maybe because if we believe what they post on Facebook, our friends seem to have much better lives and much more loving families. Uh, Social media can make the lives of others seem so much more interesting and adventurous and perfect than ours. But uh, but don't believe everything you see on the internet. Uh, you know whether those friends are really as happy as they seem, or or whether it's just a lot of highlighting the positive things and maybe ignoring the negative things. But where that picture of other people's lives is real or deceptive, we rob ourselves of a sense of gratitude by comparing ourselves to others and and resenting uh, what they have and what we don't have in comparison to them. You know, your family may not be like Beaver Cleaver's family or the Brady Bunch, or uh, your life may not be like the life of the folks in Mayberry. Uh, You may not have some of the material things that others have, but you still have much to be thankful for. Look at what God has blessed you with. Look at the people that He has put in your life. And all those priceless riches that you do possess as a child of God who has eternal life and peace with God and that sure hope of heaven. Now this verse in James talks about God's good and perfect gifts. No matter what others have, God has given you some good gifts. And He's given you some gifts that are perfect for you. You know, those things, those things that others are blessed with might not be good for you. But God gives you good gifts that are just right for you and just right for your needs. Let's recognize that truth and let's be thankful. Don't let resentment keep you from having a grateful heart. Another hindrance to a grateful heart is anxiety or worry. Paul made that connection in his letter to the Philippians. In Philippians 4, 6, he wrote, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Don't be anxious, but rather pray and give thanks. Worrying about things going on in our lives or worrying about things going on in the world around us can keep us from being thankful. And many of us probably have things, you know, situations in our families that concern us, or situations with people at work, or people we live near, or in other ways that we're connected to. There are things, of course, going on in the world, in our nation, in our communities that should concern us. Uh, You know, what's going on in the nation politically, you know, we had all these impeachment hearings going on this, this past week, and the whole political climate... Uh, what's going on racially and the divisiveness that's being generated. You know, just highlighted this week by some of the tensions, I believe it was the Syracuse at their college campus, some of the things going on there. And of course, the turning away from God and, and Christian values and the hostilities directed toward Christians. You know, there's much that should concern us and drive us to our knees in prayer and in fasting. Being concerned and praying is one thing. But anxiety and worry about such things can rob us of thankful hearts. Anxiety and worry can stem from a couple of things. One is a lack of trusting God in light of all those things going on around us. That we're not trusting Him to take care of us and to take care of those problems and those situations and those involved in them. But secondly, anxiety and worry can rise up because we're focusing more on those problems and challenges rather than focusing on God and His ability and His power and His promises. You know, maybe in our hearts we're trusting God, but you know, we spend so much time focusing on those problems, thinking about those issues, watching all the news reports about, about those things, and we aren't spending much time reminding ourselves of who God is and what He can do and what He has promised us that He, that he will do. Now maybe some of us need to spend less time watching the news shows and more time reading God's Word or doing other things that will remind us of who God is and what He says. Maybe when we get together with others here at Thanksgiving, we should spend less time talking about impeachment and more time just talking about how good and faithful God is. 
Now I'm not suggesting that we ignore the problems or that we ignore what's going on in our families, in our nation, and in society. But give at least equal time in your thoughts and in your conversations to a great God who can handle those matters and on whom we can depend no matter what it is that's going on in life. Don't let worry and anxiety rob you of a grateful heart because it can do it. It can do it. You know, worry can just drain the thankfulness right out of your spirit if you're not careful. One other hindrance that this article mentioned was misplaced priorities. Misplaced priorities. It pointed to the ten lepers whom Jesus healed. You remember where the scripture talks about that? You remember that, the, that only one came back to thank him. And Jesus asked, where are the other nine? Where are the nine? And the article suggests wherever they were and whatever they were doing, it was more important to them than thanking Jesus. For one, however, giving thanks was the most important thing he could think of. Only one of those lepers gave thankfulness the priority. Is being thankful important to us? Is it something that we choose to focus on? and to make a priority? Or do we let other things get in the way and become more important to us? Now, we're talking here about more than the celebration of the Thanksgiving holiday this morning. You know, we're referring to our attitude all the time throughout the year. But I was thinking about this in relation to this day that we set aside for giving thanks. And a few of us were talking about this a little earlier this morning. It's becoming easier and easier to lose focus on giving thanks even in relation to this occasion. And maybe that's one reason that I insist on focusing on Thanksgiving before I start focusing on Christmas. Amen. Uh, I don't, I'm, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a matter of right or wrong, and I'm not condemning anyone who sees it differently. If you want to put up your Christmas tree or in early November, or even in October, I saw somebody, one of my Facebook friends, putting theirs up in October. That's fine. But I like to wait until after Thanksgiving to really focus on Christmas. We don't put up our tree or other decorations until after Thanksgiving. I don't listen to Christmas music until uh, you know before Thanksgiving. And although we've been recording some of the new Hallmark Christmas movies that are coming on, we're not going to start watching them yeah. until after Thanksgiving. For me, I like to focus on Thanksgiving and, and the giving of thanks and not let the focus shift to Christmas and take away from that special occasion of expressing our gratitude. Like I say, that's just me. You do what you want to do and what works for you. But in a similar way, we can let other things, not just Christmas, but other things in our life take priority and keep us from taking time to be thankful. Those other lepers, they may have been doing some good and reasonable things, telling their families that they had been healed or going to see the priest and, and letting him check them out and give them the okay to, to rejoin society. But one leper chose to make gratitude his priority. And if we don't make thankfulness a priority, it will get shoved back in a corner by other things in our lives. So misplaced priorities can rob us of having a grateful heart. Like I said, there are many other things that can hinder us too. But as, as we look to be thankful, let's be open to the Holy Spirit showing us any attitudes, any spirit in us that might be getting the way, in the way of our having grateful hearts. Whether it's pride or resentment or anxiety, other priorities, whatever it might be. Let's ask the Lord to help us and cleanse us of those so that we can be the grateful people that we ought to be. Let's bow our heads for prayer.